As somebody who's come to respect and admire the Hizmet movement, it is very painful uh, to see what's happening currently in Turkey, to see how the movement's being defamed, to see how the good work of the movement is uh, being thwarted. Uh, that's very hard and painful to see. Um, I, one of the things I admire about Hoca Efendi is the way he has threaded the needle in the relationship between civil society and politics. My understanding is that uh, when the current prime minister was elected, and the current prime minister said, I have a commitment to democratic society, we have a constitution currently that was written in 1980 during a military coup, that we need a new constitution, we need to recognize the full rights of minorities, such as Alawites, Armenians, and Kurds in our own country, um, that the movement was in favor of those values and that direction. So they said, we will support uh, the, this party and this prime minister because you are pursuing those goals. And of course, it's always tricky when you do that, and some people say, ah, you're really showing your cards now. You're really a political movement, not a civil society movement. Uh, and the movement said no. Then when the prime minister backtracked and began to back away from that full commitment to democracy, then the movement criticized uh, those actions. I think Fethullah Gulen has said it uh, very well and very succinctly. We have not moved. We are and continue to be where we're at in favor of working for true democracy out of the context of civil society. It's the political uh, game in Turkey that has shifted. And uh, my guess is, is that uh, the people committed to the movement were always committed to the movement for its values, its principles, its ideals, not for some kind of personal benefit and that now that the movement is currently under siege, they're not going to abandon the movement. They're going to continue to be where they have been, and uh, probably this will only deepen uh, the commitment of those in the movement as they experience this turmoil. I believe a government would use an organization as Hizmet to distract people, to get people to hate blindly, to accuse others for a government's own failures. These are common tactics used throughout history. Uh, it's a playbook that, that unjust governments use. And so it's important that we continue with the path of education, that we continue with the path of kindness. Uh, there, there will be no violent revolution. There will be no uh, outrage no rising up against any government. Who talks about Turkey today as a model? And the reason why people don't talk about Turkey as a model is because, and exactly because of the authoritarian and thuggish policies and behavior of the current Turkish Prime Minister. So um, I think his reaction to the Hizmet movement is really a, um, a reaction that is motivated um, not by anything that the Hizmet movement has done that's illegal or immoral, but he doesn't want to answer for the policies that he's pursuing. So I think the accusations are um, unconvincing. I think they're mean-spirited. And I'm hoping that Turkish society can um, figure out a way to resolve this problem that they're currently experiencing. Because if they can, and I hope they can, I, I'm still very optimistic about Turkish democracy. Democracies always face um, difficult moments, crises. I think we're seeing that happening today in Turkey. And the challenge really is, is for all members of Turkish society to try and come together and try and resolve this nonviolently, peacefully. When I then heard that not only the prosecutors, but thousands of policemen and even judges were being transferred, were being taken out of important assignments, were being sent to the hinterlands, were being sent out to the provinces, uh, one has to wonder is this really a democracy and a country based on laws or is it based on a dictatorial mandate 
that's coming out of Accra and from the presidential palace because this is not the way that an investigation should be conducted. I don't know the full story of what's currently going on in uh, Turkish politics. Um, I do think it's, it's very disappointing um, that the Prime Minister, in my opinion, using Mr. Gulen as a scapegoat. I think that, I mean, let's, let's look at it this way. Democracy is messy and Turkey is a young democracy. Um, and there's always going to be challenges. At the same time, I think that uh, change is frightening um, for people. Uh, I don't think it's an excuse to, to slander somebody, disavow a movement that is uh, clearly focused on only doing good things and um, benefiting people and trying to bring the world closer together. Um, it's a disappointment, but I'm a strong believer that in the end, um, the truth and good triumph and prevail and, uh, and, that, and that they emerge.